All right, let's talk about biology and shooting strategies. Now, keep in mind that I have pre-focused at 9.2 feet using the auto area AF critter mode. I have set the memory lock for just on the other side, so that distance, 9.2, which is the closest flower, the back flower, you know, I keep, if, if this is a feeder and they're coming in this way, there's a flower back here and they're gonna come in this angle. So that's where I have to set the memory lock is for when they're at this angle. And that's about 9.8 to 11 feet when you use the memory lock on the Z4045 on the Z9. All right, shooting strategy. I don't really want the feeder in the photograph. It happens sometimes, it sways from the activity in the wind, it gets in there sometimes, but I want the, the photograph, the hummingbird, right in this area, this, this spot when it comes in. And I wanna get it when they're coming to the feeder so I see the front side. Side side's okay, butt shots, yeah, not so much. So this is kind of on both sides, the feeder is my shooting area. So what I prefer to do is I will get a little part of the feeder in the lower corner of the frame. Okay, so it'll be in there. And I'll hit the auto area AF, so I have the shutter release partly depressed, so the system's activated. I'll hold the AF on button, so it's locking in, and then I'll wait for the Hummer to come in. Now, keep most of the time, they're gonna go like this. The ones that just park on a blossom and just suck down the juice, that's okay, but it's not really a photograph. It's when they're flying and then they're doing their gyrations to get away from the other hummers that the photographs, the magic really begins. So, gonna pre-focus on that blossom, and then I'm gonna look in this area. So the blossom will be in the little short corner of the frame, so I have a reference point where they are, and then I wait for them to come in. Now, with the auto area AF, you'll see a little box, white and green. Green means good to go, basically. White means it's got the eye, but it's not really dead sure it's tack sharp. When it goes green, I hit the button and I take the photographs. Now the camera is gonna move, okay? It's gonna move a little bit as you're following the bird. Keep in mind with that slower shutter speeds, camera movement plus bird movement, you might get ghosting. And what's ghosting? It's kind of like this area around the bird that's not tack sharp, but you can see a little fuzzy through it. That's ghosting. Now I am technically ghosting the wing beats. I want the eye, the eye has to be tack sharp. The rest of the body, the more the merrier, but the wings I want out of focus. Now, important part of the biology to understand, you have, well, well we have here, um, we've got uh, seven or eight species so far. The, the biggie is the barrel line, which is very, very, very rare. Um, we had the uh, blue throat mountain gen for about, I couldn't even say the word blue and it came and gone. We have the viola, uh, or the, viola the rivalese, which is the big one. We got the really small one, the Calliope. We got the next one, the Costa. We have Rufus. We have had Allens. We have Broadbill, which is the one you keep seeing coming here. We've had, uh, uh, let's see, who did I miss? Oh, well, I had a Viet Crown for a second. So it's, oh yeah, and Costas, if I didn't say that. So we've got, you know, ones that are this big and ones that are this big. And when you change the size of the hummingbird, you change the wing beat, okay? The wing beats aren't all the same. Why is that important? Well, we got to keep that in mind when you are looking at the exposure. If you got little guys, let's say you got a rufus. The rufus are like, you know, they're the, they're the guys that just want to kick butt. They're just chasing everybody. And those wings are just going like crazy. If you want him, okay, that slower shutter speed of 1, 125, you might get some ghosting around the head. Where on the other side, the uh, Rivolis, they're big guys. Their wings are going, rrm, rrm, rrm. they don't move that much. So 125, you're probably going to nail the eyeball. That's important to understand. Now, I am doing no manual focus in this process. The camera's doing it all. That's just a huge, huge load off my plate to think about. Because I'm just moving this camera because as soon as they come in, you can remember I pre-focus on that flower right there. As soon as they come in, I want to move that camera so that blossom is no longer in the frame, and I want to shoot. Uh, I was pausing because there's a there's a one of the broadbills is right behind Sharon wanting to come into the uh, flower right here. Now, what's with this? It's 
this is the, the thing that's just amazing about these guys. So they're nine feet away, okay? And, and they look really physically big when they're nine feet away. And the viewfinder, they look monstrous. But then they come right here, you see just how small. I mean, they weigh less than a penny, guys. And they come in here, and it's just the most amazing part of the process. And there's times where, most of the time, when they come in there, I stop shooting. I just sit there and look at them and watch them. And they look back at me. There's uh, anecdotal evidence that hummingbirds know who feed them. So I'm the one that puts the feeders out every morning and takes them back. And quite often when I leave the cabin with the feeder in my hand, I've got an escort. I've got broad bills coming out here with the feeders in the at 5.30 in the morning. Now we have, you could shoot all day. You could shoot all day. But something to think about. One is that the greatest amount of activity from hummingbirds is in the morning. Two, when the light comes up like it is right now, I'm shooting this video now because there's no really good shooting. There's hummers out there and they're still active, but look at the background. That background is hot and nasty. I'm in Arizona. It's 100 and it was 106 down the flats yesterday and it's um, uh, 94 up here. So that's pretty warm temperatures. You need to make sure you take care of yourself. And that light, it's literally and figuratively hot. These guys are little flying gens. You need to wrap them in that frame with beautiful light. And that's really the last most important thing to remember about in this process. So yes, sharp images, that's the first criteria, but it's not the last in the scenario. You wanna make those little flying gems come to life for those who are not as fortunate as us to come out and photograph Hummers. So that's basically it. That's that's my rig and setup for 2023. The Z9, the Z100, Z4045, 1.4, Profoto A10, and of course, the Hummers of Madera Canyon. Thanks for coming by. And remember to make every click your photograph.